The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. <clears throat> Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we come into the last trading day before Thanksgiving. You got a half a trading day on Friday. We'll be closed for that holiday. Uh, one of, if not the only, days where the market is open, but we'll be closed. Did you know that the stock market is not allowed to be closed four continuous days in a row? It's part of the regulations. It's part of price discovery, right? Making sure that the market doesn't close for an extended period of time, that there's price discovery so that you know what the true value of supply and demand is equal to. That is basically one of the only reasons that you have a half a day on Friday to make sure that the market opens, then it closes, it abides by the regulations. It cannot be closed four continuous days in a row. That's the reason why you get that half a day on Friday. Uh, hopefully, all of you will have a great Thanksgiving out there. Folks, I say it at the beginning of the program, be safe out there. No drunk driving. Okay, when I was in college, I worked for uh, one of the Budweiser distributors outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, outside of uh, Villanova, Pennsylvania, where I went to college. Fortunate to work there. Learned a few things when I was working there. One of the things I learned today, tonight, biggest drinking day of the year. Now, that was the case 20 years ago. I'm not sure that's the case anymore. Things have changed a bit. 20 years ago, though, biggest drinking day of the year. The fact that everybody comes home for Thanksgiving, the fact that college kids come home, there's a lot of reunion-style deals. I remember my high school used to have events on Wednesday night prior to Thanksgiving as a kind of get-together. Point being said, biggest drinking day of the year. Be safe out there. Be safe on Thanksgiving as well. If you have too many cocktails, open that phone, pull up an Uber Eats, an Uber, Uber Eats, pull up an Uber, get home safe, and then we'll see you back here on Monday. And uh, we'll be in the Tiger's Den on Friday a lot. If you haven't turned the Tiger's Den, folks, there'll be action in there on Friday. I plan on being in there on Friday as well, digesting all that beautiful turkey from Thanksgiving. Yeah, biggest drinking day of the year. Didn't know that. Be surprised, right? But it kind of makes sense if you think about it in terms of nobody has anything to do tomorrow morning. All you got to do is show up at the relative's house or your house. Uh, get a nice plate of turkey with some stuff in Thanksgiving, the fixings, and all that good gravy on top of it as well. But yeah, biggest drinking of the year, so be careful. Ah, oh, my charts aren't out there yet. All right, well, thankfully, I uh, had a little bit of uh, Thanksgiving. So we'll go there, and there are the charts, and perfect. Thanks to my producer for getting me kicked off, our man Al, holding down the fort as usual. And let's get into the market action. We got the S&Ps this morning, up by 15 points. We got a lot to digest. You get Sam Altman. Back at OpenAI, <clears throat> boy, that one is going to be uh, quite the saga when they make it to Hollywood, I'm sure, right? Who gets the rights for that script? Going to be an interesting one. Hasn't even quite come out yet in terms of what he did to get fired. That's the most remarkable thing about this. In the first post that they had, they implied that he was dishonest. That's the most startling thing about this. And then it comes out that he may not have even been dishonest. They haven't even said why they fired him. And now he's back and they have a new board. Uh, nonetheless, Microsoft, a little bit of volatility. We jump over to them. Microsoft catching a bid as things are back to normal just before the storm, as in, uh, yeah, Sam Altman back as the CEO of OpenAI, and he doesn't have to deal with the board anymore. It'd be interesting to see how that corporate structure changes. We jump over to <clears throat> NVIDIA shares. NVIDIA out their earnings last night. They beat the numbers, but not as high as some of the lofty expectations. Nonetheless, you talk about a volatility crush, man. NVIDIA trading within $1 of where it was yesterday. What was the expected move? $30. What kind of a butterfly could have you built for yourself? About a $60 butterfly range, right? If you're going $30 one way, $30 the other way. Where is NVIDIA? NVIDIA's got a $4.99 bid, and it closed at $4.99.44 yesterday. So the bar was pretty high, and you could say that they lived up to it. Nonetheless, NASDAQ 100, we're up by 80 points, 16,070. Quite a little sell-off into yesterday, early action. Lows at 1030 in the morning. We got the Dow up 61 points right now, and the Russell up by 12. Boy, we got some action in crude. So OPEC, they're delaying their meeting. Yeah, and the market's saying, uh, I don't know about that one. We're trading lower, man. OPEC delays the meeting, and you got crude with a 74 handle. 
Got to love that when you're paying prices at the pump, man. Seventy-four fifty-one for the price of crude. That's your weekly chart. And boy, seventy bucks has been the floor recently on a longer-term basis. We'll see where we go from there. All right, you jump over to gold. Quite the volatility in gold recently. We put it back on a daily. You see the acceleration yesterday for gold, up to a high of 2009. We're backing off a bit, back to a 15-minute chart. There was your acceleration yesterday. We're just chopping around just above 2,000 this morning. You jump to notes and bonds, and what do we got? We got a 109 handle. You put this thing on a daily. We've been talking about this channel line for some time, and you can see the slow drift away from the channel line that this thing is making, right? Boy, it would take quite an upheaval of the trend right now for higher price and lower yield to get back within this channel line. You're talking about a move that's almost three full points now above this channel line. Maybe you get one more test or something like that. Uh, I was talking to my dad. I was going to say talking to Grandpa last night after the program. We were joking around with Tommy, and we were saying, nope, Tommy, yields are going down. Tommy's going, yields are going up. Tommy thinks yields are going up. Tommy the fourth. He's two years old. Maybe he doesn't have the experience necessary. Uh, his grandpa and I were trying to tell him that we probably think that yields are going down right about now. Uh, and that seems to be the trend, man, as yields continue to break away from that channel line. We got a 109 handle. And let's jump into some of the headlines. Weekly jobless claims we kick it off with. Falling by 24,000. Now, there's a lot of volatility and variance in these numbers. They're a week-on-week -week basis. Initial claims plunging by 24,000 to 209,000 in the week ended November 18th. That was slightly below expectations. They were looking um, for about 220, I think, which is also the four-week average now. Continuing claims easing to 1.84 million in the week ended November 11th. You take a look at these on the chart. You know, you did have that spike up to the 260 area, right? In June, you've backed off a bit from there. Continuing claims rising above 1.8 million, a slight downtick from there. Always interesting to see how this market interprets data. Is good news bad news or is good news good news? Right now, good news is actually good news as we have a weekly jobless claims number at just over 200 thousand and the market likes that number and we're taking it we're trading a bit higher up by 15 points for the s p's approaching 45.66 now we're getting to an area look at where we are we're at the exact high to the tick of the high of september 15th right so you know the one thing i will say is it's the wednesday before thanksgiving folks it's also one of the busiest travel days of the year we could see some light markets right now there's going to be a lot of people who have a four-day weekend coming up, okay? Very few people in the market going to be around for the Friday open session where it's open for half a day. Just because you get low volume does not necessarily mean you get low volatility because when you have less players in the market, you actually can get larger swings occasionally, okay? Occasionally, of course, but you can get some large swings because you got less participants in the market, less volume, uh, and each player in the market can have an outsized impact, which can lead to some volatility. Doesn't mean it will be a sustained move once we bring back the markets next week, but we will see. All right, and as we come into the break, we got markets in positive territory to kick things off right now. S&P's up by about three tenths percent. NASDAQ 100 up by four tenths. The Dow up by one tenth percent. And we got the Russell up by 11 as the market digests NVIDIA flat literally to the penny right now flat nvidia we're coming back we'll talk to our man kevin hicks from fast market from the schwab network stay tuned folks we'll be right back don't go away If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up by 13 right now. We get the NASDAQ 100 up by 74. Markets in the green. We got crude pulling back a bit to talk about some of the market action this morning. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time from the Schwab Network Fast Market right here on Tiger TV. And let's just jump right into it. Kevin Hinks, we got a positive market coming into the Thanksgiving holiday. And we got NVIDIA trading within almost pennies as we started this talk of yesterday's price action. Uh, good morning, Kevin. What do you think of the market action? this morning good morning tommy yeah you know i think it's funny that people think oh nvidia is not moving today well it rallied 25 percent this month <laughs> into that number if you look at the chart so yeah i'm i'm not surprised that nothing was good enough to make the stock rally now that being said the 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 day and the week still has a lot of time left tommy so let's see what happens when the market opens and you know, it looks like on the things from platform, it looks like they've done about 3.8 million in volume overnight and this morning. That's going to be a much bigger number very soon. Let's see what the, over, the, the real market takes it to, not just the overnight trade, Tommy. Where supply equals demand when that opening bell kicks in, right? Uh, what did you think of the uh, crude movement, if I could, Kevin, this morning? We got OPEC delaying their meeting. We got crude pulling back. You know, energy prices, that's that's one component of what's going on here. Quite the move in crude as we come into Thanksgiving holiday with all the travel as well. Yeah, I think there's there's uncertainty in crude oil. Normally, uncertainty makes commodities go up, Tommy. But this, you know, it, you have to think that they're discussing possible cuts and the fact that some of these OPEC countries don't want to cut, right? You want, I, if you're OPEC plus, you're fine cutting as long as it's not you that has to cut, as long as it's sure. someone else. So I imagine that's why that's part of it. They didn't give any reasons why this meeting was delayed, but you have to think there's some dissension in the ranks there at OPEC plus on whether or not they should cut. Why? Because the U.S. is now at record high crude oil production, 13.2 million barrels a day, more than in the Trump administration, Tommy. Think about that. And why isn't anyone talking about it? Well, Republicans don't want to talk about that the Biden administration is pumping more oil than they do. And frankly, the Democrats don't want to talk about it because it might be unpopular with their donors. So interesting scenario going on right now in crude oil but yeah crude oil heavy today down 4.4 percent pre-market 
See, folks, that's why you want to watch Fast Market. So you get the politics out of it. You get the the meat of what's going on. And I got it up on the Thinkorswim platform, man. Not a lot of people were looking for the collapse of crude when we had, I can't believe it's just that recently, man. Almost in October, I got on a daily chart, September 28th, $95. And we got a 74 handle in the price of crude right now. Uh, we come into Thanksgiving, of course, Kevin. We have a half a day on Friday as an experienced trader yourself. What do you think, you know, when we come back on that Friday, even today, right? We got a lot of people going to be out of the office a little bit early, I'm sure, as we come into Thanksgiving. Huge travel day. Some probably not in the office at all. Might have some low volume as we approach the later part of the day, depending on what happens as we have a little volatility. But as a trader, Kevin, are these days that you look for volatility? Are these days that potentially, and we know anything can happen, but it is interesting around the holidays how things can either be more volatile, less volatile, volume, something that may be impacted. How do you look at that maybe as a trader? Do you think about that at all? Kind of big question, but how do you, how do you approach something like today and even Friday around these holidays where we'll know we'll have less market participants? Tommy, I've spent most of my adult life in trading pits around Chicago in the CBOE and in the Board of Trade. And... I can tell you that I would literally ask the traders in the pit, are you guys coming in over, over the holidays? If they were coming in, I'd stay home. If they were all staying home, then I'd come in and see if there was some opportunity with a, a smaller amount of people. So, yes, there will be less eyes on the market. But, Tommy, here's the evolution of these markets over time. High-frequency trading, electronic trading, computers don't know it's a holiday. They don't know it's, it's, it's Thanksgiving. They don't know that Friday's a half day. So it'll be really interesting. They continue to trade these markets. So, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out over time. But we've had some big moves on holidays and half days if you look in the past. So, yeah, uh, I think that less people will be watching the market, but you probably want to keep one eye on it just in case. I like that uh, story. I like the comparison, the, the example, because it makes a lot of sense, man. That's why I asked the questions. I appreciate it, as always. Now, we're coming into Thanksgiving. Do you guys have equities that you might be talking about at 12 o'clock today, Kevin? Yes. Mike Foley is going to do a presentation on Spotify and the great things happening at that company. But then we're going to have some fun. Where do you think you'll be shopping over the weekend, Tommy? We're going to cover Dick Sporting Goods that just Ooh. had a great earnings report and rallied. Yeah. And we'll cover Lululemon, two places nice. where men and women are going to be hanging out maybe over the weekend. Lululemon and Dick Sporting Goods today, Tommy. I like it, man. You know, Dix, they are one of my favorite stores to shop in. We've talked about it before. A little pricey. Um, I like the Nike gear they have. You say they, they live and die sometimes by the Nike brand. They got so much Nike in that store, but I do. I'm a, I'm a Dix fan, man. I go in there, um, and I'm a Nike fan as well. So I guess they go hand in hand, as we've talked about. Kevin, I appreciate the time so much, as always, man. We look forward to the program at 12 o'clock. Have a great Thanksgiving with your family, and we look forward to seeing you next week as well, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Say hi to your father for me. I sure will. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks, Spotify, Dix, and Lululemon. Uh, and yeah, where are you going to be shopping, right? Over Black Friday. I already did a little Black Friday shopping. Uh, the stores, boy, they got it going on, man. Target had Black Friday shopping going on Monday. How did Black Friday become Monday? But somehow they did it. They had a Black Friday sale on the Monday of Thanksgiving. I was in Target on the Friday, um, on the Monday and I'm looking, and I didn't. I knew there'd be sales or something, you know, but I didn't, and it was Black Friday sales. And guess what, man? Uh, got some good toys for the kids because they had a couple of nice sales out there uh, on some toys for the kids. So guess what? I've already, Santa Claus has already started his shopping spree, folks, uh, at Target. But Dix, yeah, the last part of that conversation, though, Dix, a little pricey, little pricey for sure. Um, the merchandise that they have in there, a little longer-term picture for Dix, quite the fall-off on their last earnings. They had a big day on theirs, but they gave back a good portion of that, right? You accelerate up there, and you pull it back on that occasion. Yeah, so again, reminder, we will be closed on Friday for the half day here, but the Tiger's Den is going to be rocking, folks. So that's the deal. You got to get in the Tiger's Den, all right, because we're going to have participants in there. I think I remember last uh, Thanksgiving on Friday, maybe eating an open-faced Thanks, uh, turkey sandwich for breakfast on Friday morning, uh, watching the market. And Kevin put it well. You know what I mean? If there's nobody there, of course you want to be there, right? If there's no one there, think about the opportunity. If everybody's there and there's going to be the same old deal, then maybe you stay home. Interesting when you look at it in that context. All right, let's jump around to some of the action we got going on. We talked about NVIDIA. 
almost to the penny of where you were yesterday, right? NVIDIA shares. You jump over to Deer, not quite the scenario, man. They were talking about Deer in the Tiger's Den this morning. Our man Z putting in some great numbers that they came out with. Net income, 8 billion versus 9.3 for guidance they're talking about here, okay? That's quite a miss on guidance. Net sales next year could drop 15 to 20% in its largest segment. The market says, hold on one second, man. Now you take a look longer term picture on Deer, we're going to open at about 363 here. Um, yeah, it's been quite a run and quite a consolidation. Deer trading basically where it was two and a half years ago right now. Interesting when you look at it in that context. Appreciate that good information in the den as usual, Zeke. All right, stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We get to see the NVIDIA opening. That's going to be the most interesting of all, as Kevin says. Let's see where the volume goes when the market's open. Stay tuned, folks. we got a lot to talk about, so we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get markets open. You catch a little bit drift of higher price on the opening bell. Nvidia slightly in the red. You're off by a buck eighty-seven. You get back three tenths percent. Basically, no movement in a five hundred dollar equity for Nvidia shares right now this morning. But as our man Basil says, as our man Kevin says, the day is young, and we will see where we go. Jumping into those numbers for Nvidia, the revenue triples as the AI chip. Uh,
excuse me there, folks. A little sneeze, grab a little tissue. Okay. So their revenue tripled. They knew that was going to happen. Okay. So it's a sensational headline. But nonetheless, the revenue triples. They get into the numbers. Earnings, 402 a share versus 337. Revenue, 18.12 billion versus 16.18 billion. The thing is, is that some of the highest projections were as high as 21 billion. So you, you got a lot of variance and and the, the range of where they could come in was pretty wide there. Revenue grew 206% year over year. They knew this stuff was gonna happen. And how about net income, man? Net income, 9.24 billion up from 680 million in the same quarter a year ago. Did you read that? Mind-blowing numbers, right? The data center revenue, the behemoth of their company, 14.5 billion, up 279%, more than the 12.97 billion the market was looking for. Half the data center revenue came from cloud infrastructure providers such as Amazon and the other consumer internet entities and large companies. Okay, so a big portion of their revenue are the biggest companies out there. They're probably reliable customers going forward, right? The gaming segment, 2.86 billion. Market was looking for 2.68. Now, with respect to guidance, they're looking for 20 billion in revenue in the fiscal fourth quarter. Now, here's the interesting part of what's going on here, talking about China, okay? So they're retooling some of the chips they have with China. But boy, they talked about, they may see some real rapid declines in terms of China there, where they go for China. And what I don't understand is they're retooling some of the chips to get around the restrictions that were put in place by the government to make sure that some of the top technology is not going over to China, right? I have to think that eventually that's going to be a big deal. And they've talked about longer term, that could be a problem for them. They talked about it last night. Okay, It doesn't mean it's going to be a problem for them today. But if you're thinking a little longer term and you're looking at NVIDIA shares, I would be very careful calculating China growth there because China's in an, in an arms race with everybody. And the new arms race is AI. And so, yes, they're going to have to use the chips that are available and they probably don't have the capabilities to build their own production house in China. But eventually China is going to want the technology that American companies are able to use, and they're not going to want the retooled chips that NVIDIA has made to get around the restrictions to allow China to produce. So longer term, I think that's um, going to have to be something that you pay attention to. But guess what? Not today, folks, as this market goes straight higher, man, with the NASDAQ 100 up by 8 tenths percent. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Google, there you go, up one3 3%. Microsoft, they're a happy campus this morning. Excuse me, as Sam Altman is back at OpenAI, uh, back to the status quo with the board in their pocket to boot. So why not? Microsoft up 1.6%. Amazon shares, quite the day yesterday, not like today, up by 2.1%. Look at this market, man. <sighs> Look at this pop on Amazon right now, right? Just everything. All right, we get down to yields. Why not? We got a little bit of a drop, but right now you get the 10-year up by about four or five ticks right now, trading with a 109 handle. And let's jump around to some of the headlines. So, oh, that's not the one. Did I, did I close it? Nope, I didn't. Oh, did I? I may. Nope, I did not. All right, we got there. Uh, and I wanted to talk about yields. Okay. 10-year Treasury yield falls to two-month low, dips below 4.4%. And right now, as we speak, we're probably right near that number. What are we talking about? Yeah, we're under it. 4.38, technically. The yield on the 10-year, 4.38%. The yield on the 10-year, uh, quite the pullback. And you're only talking about a month. We give back 6 tenths percent. We're right back to where you were basically uh, almost two, two and a half months ago, September 15th, when, they came, when we came into that number. Look how you back it up even more than that. I mean, can you believe that we had the tenure at 3.4% in May and you ran up to five? <sighs> Staggering numbers, depending on where you go in uh, duration. Okay, we got to talk about Binance, right? So Binance pleads guilty. They lose CZ. They pay fines to end the legal woes. Now, CZ is supposedly worth $23 billion, okay? He might do 18 months is what I saw here. That's not a bad deal. 
right? That's more than a billion dollars for every month he's going to do in jail. Think about that, right? Think about that. Uh, they're going to pay $4.3 billion, okay? And boy, some of the numbers you look in here, I saw something like there was almost, I think, a, a billion dollars in transactions between Iran. Maybe they listed in here. So they're going to pay $4.3 billion. Zhao himself, ZZ, is going to pay $50 million fine. He's going to step down as CEO. He pleads guilty to violating the Bank Secrecy Act in federal court in Seattle. It includes the Justice Department, Treasury Department, and the CFTC. Okay, years-long investigation. Uh, compare how he got out to how um, SBF got out. But that's not a fair comparison because what they're accusing him of here is allowing transactions that should not have been allowed versus a Ponzi scheme. Two different things, okay? Uh, he faces as many as 10 years in prison, okay, but it expected to get no more than 18 months under, under a plea deal that appears to have saved him from the harsh penalties that other prominent crypto criminals have faced. Now, don't get confused by that statement, okay, that he is not SBF. They weren't just taking everybody's money. That is not what is alleged here. What is alleged is the failure to prevent and report suspicious transactions with terrorists, including Hamas, al Qassam brigades. There's a bunch in here. I'm not going to be able to pronounce them all. Uh, yeah, and here's the one. They allowed 1.1 million transactions worth more than almost $900 million between the U.S. and Iran. Not allowed, okay, between the U.S. and Iran. But you can see this is a different deal than the outrage over just taking people's money and losing it. Not even losing it, stealing it like SBF. So the money from the fines is going to be split among the DOJ, CFTC, and other agencies. That's $3.4 billion to the Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network and almost a billion dollars to its Office of Foreign Assets Control over Bank Secrecy Act and sanctions violations. Quite the mouthful of words there. Uh, but nonetheless, remarkable, man. As he gets out, there it is, yeah, $23 billion. Not a bad deal, 18 months. Billion dollars a, a month is what he gets in there. Yeah. And of course, it makes sense. I mean, come on. We know that that was going on in crypto, right? That they're kind of evading reporting laws, financial transaction laws, etc. cetera. Uh, and on the heels of that news last night, Bitcoin drops a bit. We get back those losses, still sitting at about 36,500 for Bitcoin shares. We got markets accelerating higher. Nothing in the way with no sellers, no market participants today, potentially with a little bit of lower volume. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets accelerating higher with the S&P up by 27 points right now. We got the dollar index. You jump over the DXY up another 35 pennies right now. I say another, but we've had quite a pullback recently to talk about some of the action in currencies, to talk about some of the action in crude. Great day to have our man on, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can jump over to the front page of TFNN under the newsletters tab. You'll see Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. You hit the subscribe button. It's $97 a month. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. We've got a lot of time. Over the holidays, we're closed on Friday. Check out the Tiger Forex Report. And then under the Services tab, you want a couple great webinars, man? You want to really get into candlestick patterns? Check out his webinar there. And also on calendar stock option spreads. And I know we'll have some more webinars coming up with our man Teddy, too. But, Teddy... Good morning. Happy early Thanksgiving. Uh, how are we doing this morning, Teddy? Uh, doing fantastic, without a doubt. Happy Thanksgiving to you and the family and your dad and everybody in the crew. You there. as well, man. You as well. Uh, how's Chicago this morning? How, what's the beautiful, windy city like? Well, you know what? It's actually kind of a calm morning, not too windy. It's 35 degrees. We're going to get up to 45, so I may actually go hit some golf balls later on this afternoon. <laughs> Those uh, you, boy, you got steel in those veins, man. Hitting golf balls in the 40s. I was up in Boston this it's past Chicago. weekend. Um, we were, yeah, we were. I was very fortunate. We were up there this past weekend, and man, it was 62 degrees on Saturday, Teddy, in the middle of November in Boston. I had it made. By the time we were leaving, it was 35, and I said, Ah, this is the cold I remember. My goodness. So, kudos to you because I couldn't hit those golf balls in the 40s, man. Uh, let's get into the market. Can we kick it off with crude? What do you? What do you? Absolutely. I mean, we got OPEC delaying things. Of course, we've heard this morning crude pulling back. Uh, last I checked, we had a 74 handle. What do you think mm -hmm. of the action on the price of crude? Uh, you know what? I love it. You know, just the Tiger Forex report nailed that market, too, this week. Uh, we were looking for a test of support again. And, and I like the area where it's at. Like right now, I was looking um, between that. Uh, let's see. What do they have it at? As, uh, between $73 and $70. I'd like that as a nice support band. So I think we could see a little bit of drifting in that area right now, especially with the holiday markets and stuff like that. Um, but I think that's pretty much where we're going to start to see a, a bottom at. You know, like we're at this inflection point where oil is now coming onto this support area yields are finally pulled back they're hitting a nice little correction zone the dollar index did the same you know just like the yen bounced yesterday and the swiss did so i think we're hitting these areas where the, we've been in a corrective phase going against the, the overall longer term trends in all of these markets. And we kind of touched that on that a little bit over the last week or so that we were coming into this phase. And I think that we might have hit it yesterday. So I'm not saying that we hit the low in, um, for instance, like the, the yen, you know, or in the dollar index and what have you. So but I think that we're definitely probing that area where we're going to find that little bottoming area as we settle into the, la the last part of the fourth quarter. And if we could talk about the yen for a second, um, since you touched on that, I know we got a lot of gold bugs, of course, and, and the yen, of course, mm -hmm. um, gold trades off the dollar yen, in, mm -hmm. in among many others, but definitely get some good movements. Pretty interesting how, you, and I have it up on a weekly, I was looking on a daily, but you go back to October of last year, so just over yep. a year ago, 151.93 I got for the dollar yen, we just make it up to 151.90 within literally three pennies on my chart of that high. Uh, for those gold 
bugs out there that might be following the yen. Are you looking for a consolidation for a certain period of time? How do you try and maybe trade that? I know there's no special, you know, ball, mm -hmm. but is it's been such a run up like this whole entire year, almost from 130. We did get a little blip up to 150. Is that just going to chop around for a bit, digest it? Could it pull back with it? How do you try and look at something like that when you're dealing with a currency like that? Because, boy, that move has just been a rip-roaring rally. But we have now been flirting with 150 since almost two months ago. September 25th, we got to 149.70 the week of. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's a fantastic question, Tommy. You know, especially of all the FX pairs. The yen is is kind of set up for a big consolidation phase. You got to realize that if the Fed, whether they're done or not, uh, we know that maybe there's a quarter point still in them, or maybe they, they are stopping. Well, that's something we're going to find out over the next couple of months. So the the yield driving force of the U.S. dollar yen trade is starting to wane. Okay, so we've kind of hit that buffer zone. There's not much more for that to lift that market. Oil is in, in a nice retreat too. So as long as oil stays around this somewhere between 70 and 85 dollars, that's not giving any boost to the U.S. dollar yen. So they, they pretty much capped out around this 150 to 151 area. Remember, 150 is the target level for the BOJ too, where they do not want the U.S. dollar yen relationship above that. So and we do have new leadership that took over six months ago in the uh, BOJ. And there's still some rumors that they may start to do something as, over the next few months. Uh, the one thing I think you have to really pay attention to with the yen, though, is the BOJ, though. Not about market actions, but there's a lot of talk that they're very stretched. So, And if that's the case, if it turns out that they truly are out of bullets, um, that does not bode well for the U.S. dollar-yen relationship. Because then you could see where even if the dollar is in retreat versus most currencies, you could see a U.S. dollar-yen relationship go up to like 175, 180. You know, and that's a big yeah. jump from where we're at right now. Now, am I calling for that move? No, but if the, if it, these rumors about the BOJ are true, you know, or and especially if the Japanese economy starts to show some really bad numbers, uh, then I would really watch out for that U.S. dollar yen trade. But otherwise, if, if we take that scenario out, if everything is not in that way, I think we've hit that buffer point where 151, 150 is pretty much where we're going to be at. And we should start to chop around between this area, like probably down to 145. You know, I have that as a big directional weekly and monthly pivot for that. Nice. I appreciate that analysis, man. You talked about yields, of course, quite the pullback, man. We got the 10 year uh, under 4.4 right now. I know you look at the 30 year as well. We got a lot of people following yields, of course. I have it up on the 10 year right now. But what do you um, is this kind of a consolidation area as well? Of course, the Fed is in focus, but I mean, pretty remarkable mm -hmm. that the 10 year itself, six tenths percent in a month um, that we pull back. I mean, I know we just went from like 3.5% in May up to 5% in October, down to 4.4%. You looking for maybe a consolidation in yields? You looking for more of a pullback? Where's your mindset on yields right now? You know, actually, that's a very, very good question. I think you have to actually watch some of the bank stocks to actually know what's going to go on with that and if, over the next couple of months. If you look at some of the, like, look at Northern Trust or a couple other bank stocks, they've been trending lower for the past few months, you know, especially with the way, you know, yields have been pushing such highs, okay? Totally. But over the past couple of weeks, they've been actually railing. So are they in a corrective mode? Is that because yields have been pulling back? Because obviously they're doing more business, okay? So I think you have to watch the bank stocks. If you start to see a real rally in bank stocks, then I think you're going to see yields stay pretty much where they're at and they maybe even come pull back even some more. But if you see the bank stocks start to go back to their lows and continue the bear trend, then I'd watch yields and expect to see another um, another maybe not a hike by by the Fed. But it doesn't mean the market's not going to drive the rates higher. You know, so we sure. have to watch the economic numbers and. I, I really am hesitant to be calling a bottom in the in the 30 year and the 10 year right now. I would be very cautious about that one, you know, especially with global instability and things like that. Do I like the bottom short term? Yeah. Do I think we could be set up for a range trade maybe for the next two quarters? Maybe that's what we're setting up for. But I'd be careful about thinking that we're going to see yields really pull back a lot more. You know, I just I don't I, it's, I just don't see that happening, you know, and especially because the demand for banks for even money and CDs and things like that. They're getting money right now, which they hadn't had before. So yeah. we'll see. Great commentary, man. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always. Have a great Thanksgiving with your family, man. And I look forward to Thank talking you. to you next week. You too, Tommy. Take care. Okay. 
We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome, folks. We got a little volatility in both directions. Look at that drop we just got. You got the S&Ps up by 12 points now. We just gave up 17. We're up almost 30, continuing to drop. You got the NASDAQ 100. We're approaching a 15,000 handle. You just dropped 125 points. And the AI poster boy, NVIDIA, just dropped 16 bucks. You're off 3.3%, we'll call it, to a price of 482.98. Now, in context, we were just trading at 492 as of yesterday. Uh, Kevin mentioned the run they've had up. You were just trading with a 300 handle as recently as October 31st. A lot of optimism built in, to say the least. But yeah, markets give back that gain on the open. We'll see if we hold on to the green. Let's jump around to some of the other FANG stocks. Microsoft holds on to gains. We make a new all-time high today at 379.79. We're up by $3.76. That's a full percent to the upside. Google up by 8 tenths percent. Amazon shares up by a solid 2% right now, making a recent high for Amazon, right? Check out that acceleration. Amazon hit a high today, 147.74. Yeah, you haven't traded to that price point since uh, going back to April of last year. So you're talking about um, almost a year and a half from where we are on Amazon shares. You jump over to the big dog, Apple, up by half a percent for Apple shares right now, but this market is giving it up, man. We're at 45.62, let's check in on crude prices. Crude, 
pretty much where we kicked off the program right now. 74.39, you're down by about $3.38. OPEC delaying their meeting. Yeah, market's just continuing to slide. Let's check out the VIX right now. Volatility index, a little bit of a bid. We had a 12 handle on the VIX. How about that? A 12 handle. Would be ironic if you got the 12 handle right before you got a little bit of a sell-off coming into the holidays. Less participants in this market, man. That's a one-way trip right now. Be careful in this market, and let's check in on yields. No real action on yields as you have the market deteriorating. And uh, we'll finish it up with the dollar index. Why not? DXY climbing a bit. You got dollar strength leading to a little bit of market weakness right now with the S&Ps only up by eight. We might be negative by the time 10 o'clock rolls around with our man Basil Chapman. Folks, stay tuned. Live programming all day today. We got our man Basil coming up. We got Steve Rhodes. We got Larry Pesavento. We got Fast Market at 12. Don't forget, they're talking about Spotify. They're talking about Dick's Goods. They're talking Lululemon with our man Kevin Hinks at 12 noon. And my dad back to wrap it up three to four. Take that Uber this weekend, folks. No drunk driving. Have a great time with your family. We look forward to seeing you back here on Monday. Stay tuned for Basil coming up.